Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnson and welcome to lecture 38 of Advanced Linear Algebra. Today we're going to introduce something called the pseudo-inverse of a matrix. Now the idea behind the pseudo-inverse is very similar to what it was for the inverse of a matrix. We want to construct a matrix that undoes what the original matrix did. Okay, well we can only actually do this if the matrix is square and if it satisfies some extra condition like the determinant not being non-zero, right? That's what invertibility of a matrix was. Okay, but the pseudo inverse, it's a slightly more general concept and it has the advantage that it exists no matter what matrix you start off with. It might not be invertible, it might not even be square. The pseudo, the pseudo inverse exists even for rectangular matrices. Okay, so here's the setup, here's the, sort of the motivation. Recall that if you have a linear system AX equals B and this coefficient matrix, if that's invertible, well, that tells you something nice about the corresponding linear system. It tells you that linear system, it has a unique solution and that unique solution is just A inverse times B, okay? But, I mean, sometimes, sometimes that linear system has a solution even though the coefficient matrix is not invertible, okay? So let's go through an example just to remind ourselves of how that sort of thing can happen, okay? So here's a linear system. We're gonna show that there is a solution of this linear system, but it's this, this coefficient matrix over here on the left. We're gonna also show that that's not invertible. Okay, and we'll solve both of these problems via the same procedure. We're just gonna do Gaussian elimination, okay? So we're gonna write down this linear system in augmented matrix form. So I've just taken this right-hand side vector 606, thrown it on the augmented right-hand side, and now I just do my row operations to get down to row echelon form, okay? So I'm not gonna dwell on these. This is a linear algebra one computation, right? This is an introductory linear algebra computation. Okay, but just three row operations is enough to get you this far, and now you're in row echelon form. Okay, so from here we can see basically everything that we need to see for this particular example. So we can see that this linear system has infinitely many solutions, actually. It doesn't just have a solution, it has infinitely many, because if you look at these columns, hey, there's a leading variable, there's a leading variable, ah, but here's a free variable, okay? So x3 can be anything that you want, and then you just do back substitution to find x1 and x2 in terms of x3, and you find that any vector of this form, no matter what x3 is, is a solution of that linear system. All right, so yeah, there are solutions of this linear system. However, that coefficient matrix is not invertible. And the way that you see that is you just look at this. This is the row, this is a row echelon form of that coefficient matrix, okay? And what do you notice about it? Well, it's only got two non-zero rows, right? It's got non-zero row, non-zero row. So its rank is two. So that original coefficient matrix also has rank two. Okay, so it's not invertible. It would have to have rank three to be invertible. It's a three by three matrix. All right, so yeah, I mean, you, you, you can have a solution of a linear system even if the coefficient matrix is not invertible. So what we would like to do is we would like to be able to do something like what we did in the invertibility case. We would be, like to be able to find some matrix, which we'll call a dagger, with the property that, well, if a solution of the linear system exists, it's x equals a dagger times b, okay, even if a is not invertible. Okay, just one other quick note though to remind you of how invertibility is related to solutions of linear systems. Okay, just to remind you of a theorem from the previous class. Okay, we had a theorem from the previous class that said if the linear system AX equals B has a solution for all B, then A inverse exists. Actually, this is equivalent to uh, invertibility of the matrix as long as the matrix is square. Okay, on the other hand, all that's happened here is we've shown that AX equals B has a solution for a particular B, okay? And that doesn't tell you anything, okay? Your matrix may or may not be invertible in that situation. So that's the situation that we're in in this above example that we just went through. All right, so that's sort of the setup and motivation. Let's get to the definition of the thing that solves these problems for us, okay? Let's introduce the pseudo inverse of a matrix now, okay? And it's gonna be based on the singular value decomposition of the original matrix, or equivalently, the orthogonal rank one sum decomposition of the matrix, okay? So here's the setup. Suppose you're working over the real or complex numbers. You've got some matrix it does not even have to be square. Write down, this is your first step, you write down an orthogonal rank one sum decomposition of that matrix, or equivalently, a singular value decomposition of that matrix, right? Remember these U's, these are the columns of the unitary matrix U, these V's are the columns of the unitary matrix V, and these sigmas are the singular values, the, the diagonal entries in the big sigma matrix. All right, once you've got that orthogonal rank, run, rank one sum decomposition, what you do is you just sort of flip everything around and you get what we call the pseudo inverse of the matrix, okay? So we denote it by a dagger, that, that means pseudo inverse. And what it is, well, it's the same sum over R terms, except instead of multiplying by sigma J now, you divide by sigma J, okay? And then you just swap the roles of the U's and V's. It used to be UJ, VJ star, now it's VJ, UJ star. So just interchange the U's and V's. 
Okay, so before we do an actual numerical example, there are a bunch of points that we want to clarify about this definition before we start doing things with it. And the first thing that we want to clarify is really this is a generalization of the inverse of a matrix. Okay, if your matrix is invertible, then it turns out that this pseudo inverse is the inverse, right? The pseudo inverse equals the inverse if the inverse exists, okay? And the way to convince yourself of that is, well, you just do the multiplication. Just take this matrix and multiply it by this matrix. You're gonna see that, hey, the sigmas all cancel out with the one divided by sigmas. And I mean, because these VJs, they form an orthonormal set and so do the UJs. When you multiply these things together, a whole bunch of cancelization, cancellation happens and you're just left with, a, with an identity matrix at the end of the day. Okay. It's maybe a little bit easier to see that if you work in sort of the singular value decomposition form rather than this rank one sum form. So let's make a note about that as well. Okay, if your original matrix has singular value decomposition U sigma V star, okay, well then the singular value decomposition of this A dagger, the pseudo inverse, you just flip everything around. Okay, you interchange U and V, okay, and then you do a dagger on sigma, okay? So it's V sigma dagger U star. Okay, where, well, what do I mean by the sigma dagger here? I mean, this is sort of circular. I'm, I'm defining a, a pseudo inverse in terms of a pseudo inverse, except because sigma's diagonal, it's really easy to define what we want here. Okay, what we do, what we mean by sigma dagger is, well, sigma dagger, it's the same as sigma, except we do two things to it. First, we transpose it. Okay, so, I mean, it's diagonal. So in a sense, the transpose doesn't really do anything, except remember, it might not be square. Okay, so the only reason we do the transpose to it is to change its shape, change it from M by N to N by M, okay? Interchange the row and columns, okay? And then the other thing that you do is, well, the same thing that we did with the sigmas up here, okay? Just divide, uh, do the reciprocal of every single non-zero diagonal entry. So if there's a three in a particular diagonal entry of sigma, then one third is the corresponding diagonal entry of sigma dagger. Okay, but you just leave all of the zero diagonal entries alone. Okay, you don't check, touch any of the zero, zero entries in sigma. All right, so that's how you construct this, the pseudo inverse from the singular value decomposition itself. And one other thing that we have to clarify here that is not obvious from this definition is that the pseudo inverse, it's well-defined, okay? And what I mean by that is it doesn't depend on which particular singular value decomposition or orthogonal rank one sum decomposition of the matrix A you use, right? This, this definition here, I mean, if I change what orthogonal rank one sum decomposition of A I use up here, then it looks like I'll probably get a different A dagger down here, but it turns out, no, you don't. Okay, even though there are lots of different orthogonal rank one sum decompositions for a particular matrix, or equivalently, there are lots of different singular value decompositions for a particular matrix, right? You have a lot of freedom in how you choose U and V in general, okay? But no matter which U and V you, you choose, as long as it is a valid singular value decomposition, you're gonna get the exact same A dagger at the end of the day. Basically, all of the freedoms that you have, they sort of cancel out in this weird uh, sum and product here, and you end up getting the same A dagger no matter what singular value decomposition you use. So yeah, multiple SVDs exist, but they all give the same A dagger, okay, at the end of the day. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go through a numerical example now to illustrate how to compute the pseudo inverse of a matrix. And I'm gonna go through an example involving a matrix whose singular value decomposition we've already computed earlier in a previous lecture just to save some time, okay? So we're gonna start off with this matrix. We've seen it before, Okay, and we've seen a singular value decomposition before. Okay, we computed this a couple lectures ago. Okay, so we saw that one singular value decomposition of this matrix, it has this unitary on the left, this unitary on the right, and then its singular values were just root six and two and zero. Okay, so with that information in hand, let's compute this, the pseudo inverse of this matrix. Okay, and the way you do this, well, we're gonna do it sort of via, via the, the singular value decomposition rather than via the orthogonal rank one sum decomposition. Okay, so what we do to make that happen is we compute, well, first off, compute sigma dagger. Okay, and remember the way that you compute sigma dagger because it's diagonal, all I want you to do is well, you take the reciprocal of every non-zero entry on the diagonal, okay? So the root six becomes one over root six, the, the two becomes one half, and then you just leave all the zeros alone and you transpose it, okay? So you just change its shape. It started off as three by four. Well, you want sigma dagger, therefore, to be four by three. And you'll see if you don't do that, then there's gonna be a matrix multiplication later on that doesn't actually work out. It doesn't make sense. The sizes don't match up. So be careful to transpose it as well so that multiplications later on actually work. Okay, and then once you have that, once you have your sigma dagger, all you compute is V sigma dagger U star, okay? V sigma dagger U star. 
Okay, and this, I mean, like all you're doing is you're interchanging the roles of u and v, right? The original singular value decomposition, it's u sigma v star. Now you just swapped your u and your v and you replaced sigma by sigma dagger, which we already computed. Okay, so now it's just matrix multiplication. So you just throw everything together. Okay, here's my v copied down from up above. Here's my sigma dagger copied from right over there. And then here's u star. So I just took the conjugate transpose of that matrix u from the previous page. Okay, and now I do my, mat my matrix multiplications. I've left this matrix alone and I've multiplied these guys together and the one over root two together. I combined all of those and when you do that, you get this matrix. And then when you do one more matrix multiplication, great. Now that you get your final answer, okay? You do this last matrix multiplication and it works out like this, okay? So that is the pseudo inverse of A. Okay, so now we understand at least how to compute this, but there's still the burning question of, okay, well, like, what is it? Like, what does it actually do? What properties does it have? What problems does it solve? And we're going to leave that for next lecture, okay? So lecture 39 is going to be all about, well, what does the pseudo inverse do? What nice properties does it have? How does it actually interact with linear systems? Okay, so I will see you soon for that.